in this AQA micro video, let's spend a few minutes thinking about rationality as a key aspect of behavioural theory. Now, rationality, uh, the assumption of it, has dominated standard economic thinking, orthodox theory for decades. And the idea behind rational decision making is that people make choices with a limited budget to maximise the satisfaction or maximise the utility they get from spending on different goods and services. Now, for rational decision making to take place, people need to use all of the information available. It's not always easy. Uh, they have to make independent choices. My preferences, my tastes do not influence your decisions. And it's important, actually, for consumers to have relatively stable preferences that they can rank and make calculations. Rational choice, <clears throat> the idea that consumers aim to maximise utility and businesses aim to maximise profits, has been a dominant paradigm in economic thinking. For many, many years... For decades, economists assumed, believed that people were rational, self-interested actors. They were making their decisions based on maximising their own utility or their own private benefit. And this became a dominant paradigm. Now, a dominant paradigm is often used in economics and social sciences to refer to a set of widely accepted theories or models about how the world works. So the dominant paradigm is a useful concept to use in essays. It's a, it's a way of thinking about a topic it, it, and it often influence how researchers approach their work and how policies, government policies, are developed and implemented. So rational choice theory was the dominant paradigm within what's so-called neoclassical economics. But they're never set in stone. You know, they can shift and they can change over time, as we'll see as new evidence and new theories are developed. But... For the moment, this theory suggests individuals have maximum information, complete, full information. They act in their own self-interest and they make decisions that maximise their own welfare. We know, you've probably studied this, indeed, at Edible, that the behavioural economics revolution has challenged the assumption uh, by saying that people are not fully rational. Often they're predictably irrational and we know they're influenced by emotional cognitive and social factors. Rational choice theory, for example, requires full information. We have full, perfect information about all the options available to us and the consequences, the costs and benefits of the choices we make. We know, however, people have imperfect, incomplete information. They experience information failures or information asymmetries. For example, they may not be aware of all the alternatives available to them. If you're buying a new washing machine or a new electric car, or if you're buying a complex product like a pension, you may not have access to complete full information on the costs and benefits. And in that situation, clearly, that can lead to suboptimal decisions. But this idea that uh, of the rational, self-interested actor links in with something called homo economicus, a term used in economics to describe a hypothetical human being who always makes perfectly rational decisions to maximise their own happiness, their own utility, their own benefit. It's a theoretical, idealised version of somebody who always makes the best choices without any biases or any emotional factors influencing their choices. But keep in mind, of course, this is a theoretical idea. So clearly economics as a social science uh, has to move away from this binding assumption. Homo economicus calculate every single cost and benefit of every decision. They have a, uh, the cognitive power to compute probabilities and compute uh, costs and benefits, and they can, they're can they pretty good at the maths. And critically, uh, they don't feel any emotion or regret ex post on the decisions that they've made. So this model assumes that people make decisions without any irrationality, emotion, or outside influences. And I know what you're saying as you listen to this, what is this about? We know in the real world that people have complex, messy, difficult lives. They they operate within social networks. They're influenced by their peers. This is not what we see in the real world, but it has dominated economic thinking for a long time. Irrational behaviour, of course, is a movement away from this assumption. It's when people make systematic and persistent deviations from rational choice. They might be making choices based on feelings 
rather than logical analysis. They might be following the crowd without thinking critically about their own choices. They might be making choices based on emotional reactions to risk of things going wrong rather than a rational assessment of probability. So people have a limited ability to calculate <clears throat> that don't always operate in their own self-interest. Altruism can overtake pure self-interested behaviour. We live in a world of often overlapping, complex, uh, constantly changing social networks which influence our choices. The rise of the social influencer is something of interest to many young people. We often have a desire for instant rather than long-term rewards. Emotion often overtakes logic and people often stick to default choices even when in reality, in theory, sorry, in theory, they should be making a different choice. So, rationality lies behind a lot of neoclassical theoretical economics, but of course behavioural economics brings in the idea of cognitive biases, and we'll cover those in the next video. And thanks for joining in.